Yeah. Okay, what can I do for you? Who are you? What can I do for you? Yeah, you're talking to Gordon Tyson, Nat West for a prevention team. How are you today, sir? I'm alright, thanks. How are you? Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. So have you made any transactions today on that account ending in two three three seven? Yes. Okay. And was one of those transactions to a pet plan limited? Uh, no. Okay. We can see a transaction here for seventy nine pounds and eighty pence to a pet plan limited. And there was a second transaction for five hundred and eighty two. Now it has flag of fraudulence that we haven't left able to leave the account. We just want you to see if it was your payment. If it was your payment, sorry for the bob up, we can get that payment process through the account as soon as possible. However, if it wasn't your payment, we can get that cancelled, okay? We'll get you a new card then up, take you through the steps that it does take to safeguard your account today. I see. Okay, so have you attempted any sorts of payments to any pet plan or pet insurance? No. Okay, and when was the last payment that you made today? And what was the figure of the payment, please, sir? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't disclose what I've done to anybody over the phone, even someone that says they're from my bank. Oh, fuck yourself. Hello. 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 Getting verbally abusive. And this is, I can't tell you how regular this is. And, uh, and it's really difficult for anybody who goes through this kind of stuff to get the police involved because the police just don't want to know. You know, it is, uh, it is more than illegal, obviously, but it's not. It's not that the police don't want to know. It's not like, I mean, like when I say the police don't want to know, I make it sound like, oh, the police. It's not, it's not that the police don't want to know. It's that they are so under-resourced. When I was growing up, if you so much, as a kid, if you got a bit leery, Right, and uh, and someone told you off for playing somewhere, maybe you're playing on a bit of green or whatever that you're not supposed to play on, playing football, you know, keep off the grass, all that kind of stuff. And someone came out and and uh, told you off for it, and you said, "Ah, oh, fuck off, you old bastard," or something like that. They'd call the police. The police had the time, the effort, and the energy and the resources. They'd turn up. They would actually turn up. And they'd give you a stiff talking to. They wouldn't take you down a station or whatever, but they'd give you a stiff talking to. I mean, I remember that. I'm 59 now. This is 2022. I'm 59, and I remember that kind of thing happening. The kind of, you know, clip round the ear roll type copper stuff. But they had the time, the effort, the energy, and the resources to do it because the police force was still growing in a sense then. You know, they weren't faced with... Uh, what they're faced with now, the kind of cuts they're faced with now. But now, I mean, these people that that you just heard there, these people have threatened me with violence, they've threatened me with a gun, they've uh, threatened my family, my mum, they've threatened my wife, they've threatened me. And I've had this over and over and over again, and the police won't do a thing because they have not got the resources to do it. They've not got the time, the effort, the energy, it's my postman, uh, to do anything about it. You know, and, uh, and having spoken to so many police officers on a one-to-one -one basis, to have them say to you, I absolutely agree with you, you know, it's wrong and we should be able to do something about it, but we can't because the because and the reason they can't is because it's the priorities that are set down i remember in 2005 that is 17 years ago i remember a 
somebody on eBay trying to defraud me, and I knew that it was defrauding me out of a video camera, and I tried to get that. Uh, I phoned the post office and said, look, this is a bent, this is bent, and uh, this is a false address. The address doesn't even exist. I've checked it all out. I know that they're going to nick this. So let's just put a brick in a parcel and send it off. And, and I was speaking to the security department and they refused to even acknowledge that somebody could be working for Royal Mail and be bent. Refused, point blank, to even acknowledge it. Even though some weeks before someone had gone to prison. I'm not saying all postmen are bent. There's a lot of nice postmen, good, hard-working people, postmen and women. But a few weeks beforehand, there was a big thing in the papers about someone that had got done a big sting operation. I'm going, look, let's put a sting on them. I'll put a brick in there. You follow the parcel, nick them. Not interested. Phone the police, got through to Scotland Yard. And um, and the guy said to me then, he said, look, I, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but unless it reaches, unless the, unless the fraud is £100,000 or more, this is in 2005, unless the fraud is £100,000 or more, it doesn't even hit my desk. So when you're getting phone calls like this, you know, the police could find out, they know, because they come up as a, as a, a no caller ID, but the technology's there, the police could find out what phone number that was called from and, uh, and be turning up on his door in two hours flat. But they haven't got the resources, they won't commit the resources to actually even find out what the phone number is. It's terrible, isn't it? And I have to put up with this again and again and again and again and again. But as the saying says, keep smiling, don't let the bastards grind you down. See you later.